Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Manny Kutiel, um, and you are tuning into Manny's Super Civic Cyber Conversations. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I own a small uh, business on the corner of 16th and Valencia called Manny's. So unfortunately, we had to shut down because of the shelter in place order. Um, but just because the physical place is closed, it doesn't mean that the work uh, is over or, or needs to stop. So we've moved our programming online to these series and you are currently in it. So thank you very much for tuning in and being a part of this. Um, if you have a question for Mike San Giacomo, you can type it in at any time uh, in the Q&A box. Mike and I are just gonna chat for about 15, 20 minutes and then we're gonna get to your questions. So feel free to type it in at any time. Um, and also if you wanna share the love and spread the word, you can tag us at Welcome to Manny's and at Recology SF. Mike, you're one of my favorites. Can you hear okay. me? You broke up. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. I just said you're one of my favorites. I, I'm glad. You're just so great. I had, such, I had such a good time talking to you last time you were at Manny's. And it was one of the, um, the talks that people still talk about so much because that question of what happens to our trash was of interest to so many people. Um, so I'm, I just want to thank you for taking time again to speak to um, and help us figure out what's going on with recology during this time. So first I just want to ask you, how are you doing? Me personally, I'm stuck at home uh, like, like most people. Um, my, my role isn't one of those uh, essential services, so I don't get to go out to work. Although uh, my, my collection day is Tuesday morning, and I've re been really tempted to go jump in the truck and ride around the, the route for a day. It would be a lot more fun than sitting in this house. I'm sure it's hard for you to do that, given how hard of a worker you are and how long you work for Recology. How long have you been with Recology? Uh, almost 37 years. 37 years. So for those who don't know, Mike is this which um, does trash collection, recycling, compost, of course, in San Francisco, but all over the Bay Area and even in Oregon and Washington State. Is that correct? And correct. Said, so um, how, what percentage of your workforce is still working? You know, we've, uh, we've not laid anybody off. Uh, we adopted a policy that uh, through at least the end of May, we're going to keep everybody on. Uh, we're we're anticipating that uh, we'll allow, be allowed to start going back to work by the end of May, early June. And then we need to see how much business comes back. Um, we know it's going to vary by location, um, but we're hopeful, uh, hoping that shops like yours get to reopen. Uh, I know there'll, there'll be some, there'll be, and will there be some ramp up to getting, uh, getting back to full service levels? Probably. Uh, uh, how? How long will that take, and how long till we start seeing some travel come into the city again, which is a big deal for, for the city of San Francisco? Okay, I have so many questions. Oh, um, so just on that last one, travel. Why is travel a big indicator for you, given that um, could, given that what you do is trash collection? Why it is it, it is a big issue for us? Uh, yeah, it, tell me. I think the city of San Francisco is probably the, the, the biggest source of revenue for the city is from tourism. Um, so, you know, hotels not being filled up, less amount of service. Um, Pier 39 is shut down now. The Fisherman's Wharf is empty. Golden Gate Parks, uh, you know, people walking around, but all the facilities are empty. Chinatown's empty. Japantown's probably empty. Uh, so all those, all those folks don't have service right now, and that's going to impact us. So and I don't know how 30 comes back. How, so, so Recology is a worker-owned cooperative, right? Or it's, it's not a cooperative, but it's worker-owned. Everyone. It's worker-owned through an employee stock ownership plan. How do you think that affects your financial resiliency for moments like this? Well, it's, it's uh, I mean, for now, everybody's happy that we're keeping everybody employed. Um, uh, you know, there, you know, let me chat specifically about San Francisco. We, there, there used to be a lot of weekend work here, restaurants and hotels, all the businesses uh, had a lot of work on, 
on weekends. So we had people working overtime to do that. Uh, right now, if there's any overtime at all, it's, it's minimal. Mm -hmm. um, we were hoping to keep uh, uh, all of our employees gainfully employed as it starts to come back. So you know, hopefully we keep everybody doing something before anybody gets any overtime. Uh, obviously, that's something we still have to negotiate with, with the workers' union, but, uh, but it seems to me fair in an employee-owned company that uh, uh, we try and keep everybody doing something before uh, others get to, get, to, get to go back to some higher level of benefit. But, um, you know, it's all, it's all got to be worked out, but it, it's all going to depend on how fast do businesses yeah, the re residential is not an issue. That's, uh, er th there's probably an increase in, in business there. But on the commercial side, uh, you know, we, we need shops and businesses and hotels, all that to, to, to reopen and start needing service again. Are you seeing, this is maybe a dumb question, so forgive me, Mike, but are you seeing, um, well, is the increase in residential trash at all compensating for the decrease in commercial? Uh, we're, we're in terms of volumes. We're probably seeing the, the numbers I've heard are somewhere around a five percent increase in uh, uh, residential tonnage. A, a, lot, a lot of that is uh, cardboard. Um, uh, yeah, packages. Be ordering uh, from Amazon or somebody like them. Uh, uh, but we're not we're not getting any more uh, fees for 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 that. Uh, right. Uh, but most of that is either fitting in uh, the existing bins or carts and uh, uh, what doesn't, uh, we're not really complaining about at this point yet. Um, right. Right. But so there's no additional revenue there. The revenue on the commercial side has dropped significantly. How can you last like this, Mike? Ecology um, is a private, a private company, right? It's not a public utility. We are, right? Um, you know, we, 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 we expect we won't have uh, uh, a level of profitability this year that we would like to have that can allow us to continue to keep the business healthy. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do what we have to do. And if it gets, if it gets too bad, you know, what, are, what, what alternatives do we have? We can, we can um, think about the size of the workforce. We can think about what we all get paid. Uh, we're we're gonna we're cutting out anything that we don't have to do, right? So, so uh, you know, there's no T and E now. There's no uh, nobody's gonna What's, be going to any conventions. Um, travel and entertainment. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, we're, we're not spending money at places like your uh, your shop. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I, I really do comes back, and then I'm gonna stay positive and optimistic, and and say that. Uh, you know, we will have a bounce back and, and businesses will find a way and consumers will be confident and excited. But, you know, a lot of people are saying that that's not likely. I am still hoping for it because I'm a hopeful person. Um, oh, goodness. So my well, next question is about supply chain. So I know how have supply chains and supply kind of the the framework that our trash recycling and compost go through have been affected by well let's see so let's start with uh, uh, collection um, all of our employees that uh, hold the essential positions are coming to work uh, uh, we actually had one day here in San Francisco one of our companies where for the first time in anybody's memory there was not even one uh, sick in call. So everybody, everybody wants to come to work. It's just, you know, okay. Probably it's easier to get to work. Uh, they're probably not, mo the, the, the commercial routes aren't working probably as many hours. They're getting home faster. Uh, uh, so that, that part's good. So um, we have adjusted b because of the social distancing needs, we've adjusted people's uh, work hours. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, we actually have some residential routes, I understand, going out at 3 and 4 a.m. That's led to some complaints from people that uh, the truck's there when they're trying to sleep. Uh, but we, we need to spread people out more. Um, we also have employees who now have child care issues with you know, kids are at home and somebody's got to be there to watch them. And, you know, mm -hmm. if you've got a spouse who also has to work, uh, 
if we can help somebody be get to work a couple hours earlier and get home a couple hours earlier, uh, and that helps. So we're we're doing those kinds of things. So everything uh, that uh, needs to be picked up is getting picked up by the people that that normally do that. Um, uh, the garbage is going to the same through the same process through the transfer station going on to the landfill that it always has. Uh, there's less of it going. Uh, been a, and maybe again, I, I, the numbers are Im, imprecise, but probably order of magnitude a 20% drop or so in, in tonnage going to landfill. Um, uh, the composting, uh, that's down too, uh, in part because there aren't as many restaurants, in part uh, some people aren't doing the same level of separation as they did before, uh, uh, for, for whatever reasons. Whether why, it's, would that, why would they, why do you think they would do that? Um, you know, if, 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 if you just want to be as uh, clean in your house as you can, you put everything in one big plastic bag and off it goes. That's uh, the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I like compost so well now. I feel like I'm the best composter I've ever we, been. Uh, we wish we were getting more material because we, you know, the, the, the farms and vineyards still need the stuff. Uh, we're still making it, uh, but the, the volumes there are, are, are down somewhat. Yep. And on the, on the, the recycling side, uh, some drop in the, in, in the tonnage, obviously commercial side's not there. Uh, increase in corrugated in particular from the residential side. Uh, uh, we are, some people in our industry have actually shut down the recycling plants. Uh, we have not. Uh, we were able to, what's that? Like some city, city recycling? Uh, it, it's, it's done, it's typically done by the service provider. Mention any name. Who's shutting down recycling? Which 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 uh, areas of the country? Um, a lot of it in the Midwest. Lots, apparently a fair amount on the East Coast. Some here in California, where one large Why? company has decided uh, uh, they can't have the appropriate social distancing on their sorting facilities, so they they for work, supposedly for worker safety, they shut them down. So what happens in those places if people put their recycling in the blue bin? Is it all just piling up somewhere? Uh, no, it's probably all going to a landfill. Damn. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, we're, uh, we're able to separate, uh, we're still separating the, the materials. So we're selling um, fibers in paper and cardboard to a whole lot of folks. So uh, some of it's probably coming back to us in that very valuable toilet paper and paper towels that you can't find on the shelves that just don't last. Uh, um, the plastics are still a problem. Uh, there's less less buyers for that stuff now than there were before, and and aluminum is you know it'll move, but it's it's not as valuable as it was because you know they're not like I don't know. So I would think plenty of people are drinking beer in aluminum cans right now, but. Uh, Maybe uh, maybe everybody, prefer, everybody prefers a bottle. I, 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 don't I like a glass. I don't know what's driving that. <laughs> are you a glass bottle beer drink drinker or? Are I you a I like my uh, I like my beverages in first choice glass because um, it's. Just you know, this seen, is a very important question for the, the 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 king of trash himself. What how what what does he prefer? Well, I, you know, the the most valuable commodity is the aluminum can, but okay. you asked me taste. I prefer. I prefer a nice cold glass ball. Second choice, second choice would be the aluminum can and plastic is. Yeah, forget you know, about plastic. Forget about it. Forget about plastic. So um, when we talked last, there was a big hubbub about our cardboard, China not taking our cardboard anymore. Um, and no one picking up the cardboard, now getting charged with the cardboard. So what now you're saying is an increase in cardboard consumption and, you know, throwing away cardboard. What's happening to all that cardboard? So um, I, I don't know that there's an overall increase. Uh, there are less, less people collecting and sorting that material now. So those of us who are sorting it are, are seeing the demand come up a little bit. Pricing, mm -hmm. pricing isn't where we thought it would be, but it's better than it was. Um, uh, and so that stuff's being sold. Uh, uh, to lots of places around the world, still still going into the Far East, but not not China. And there are now, uh, I think there are at least three paper mills in um, in Washington that uh, 
have reopened that were closed for a number of years. That uh, we're starting to see some of that return here uh, since cool. China shut us off, and, and I, that that's a good thing. Yeah, good to give the business to an American company. Um, so I'm going to ask you about behavioral changes, and this is something that we're talking a lot about. And also, folks who are tuned in, first of all, if you're tuned in, raise your hand so I can see who's here. There's a little hand button. Um, I'd love to see who's here, and you can raise your hand. Oh, John San Giacomo is here. Who's John, Mike? Is that your Probably brother? my son. Your son? <laughs> your son's tuned in. Hello, John. How you doing? If you have a question for your dad, if you want to embarrass him, you get the first question, John. So type your question in. We have a lot of people on this call, he, so thank he, you all. He does me. know that I get even. That you get even, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, John, I expect a good question from you then. I want to see this happen. Um, how do you feel like COVID-19 and the economic shutdown might affect uh, behavioral changes as it relates to how people treat their trash, their compost, and their recycling? What do you think it'll do? How do you think it might give, change us? Um, I'm hoping that this makes people a little more environmentally conscious. Uh, it's sure nice to see the sky look a little clearer. Um, it'd be nice to think that people start considering uh, the impacts of plastic waste on our environment. Uh, less of it gets littered, maybe less of it gets used uh, by, uh, by glass or, uh, or aluminum first. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that, uh, that some of those things will, will happen. Do you, are you seeing an increase in single-use plastic bags since that we can't bring our reusable bags to the grocery stores anymore? Uh, I suspect so. I, I don't have that kind of statistic from, uh, from, mm -hmm. our, uh, from our operations, but I can tell you, in our, in a, based seeing what's going on in our, my own house, uh, yeah. 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 Let's get to some of these questions, Mike, and I probably have a couple more up my sleeve, but there are some already um, picked up. And John, I want to see what you write. So Manali asks, hi, Manny and Mike, what is the waste life cycle of cardboard in San Francisco? The waste life cycle? So I guess like kind of from when you receive an Amazon package in the brown paper bag, brown paper cardboard, and you put it in recycling, what then happens? To you? Well, um, We'll, the day you put it out, we're going to pick it up. Um, uh, we're going to probably have it in a bale that same day. Um, uh, depending on where it's going, uh, I understand just, uh, I believe it was this week, a large container ship arrived with a bunch of empty containers. Um, uh, waste paper, and fiber, and cardboard. Um, have been the largest export from U.S. US uh, West Coast ports for a long time, so I'm sure a lot of it came to get uh, that material. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, gets into a container, probably takes a couple of weeks to go across the Pacific, Pacific Ocean, end up at a port somewhere else, uh, unloaded. Um, I've been to mills like in Taiwan, uh, might keep a week or 10 days of uh, a material stockpile there, um, gets back into the process and starts being made into the next version of, next round of cardboard, uh, you know, a week or 10 days after it gets there probably. And uh, uh, within another week, it's probably been turned into a box and delivered to a plant that's gonna use them. Okay, is it kind of weird that I have like a distinct desire to like spend some time with those boats with the containers on them? Like I want to, I want to like go on a trip on one of those boats. Do you think it would be fun at all? Um, I don't know. I've never been on one. Well, I, I take that back. Years ago, I was I went on one that was here in the port of San Francisco, or I guess it was Oakland. Um, they have a small um, uh, crew quarters. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like I'm. You, you can't really walk around the, the deck because the no? containers are packed closely together. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm okay. not sure it's a lot of fun, Manny. You're kind of ruining my, my fantasy. It's, uh, it's not like the old days of being in a tramp steamer where you could walk around and 
Yeah. 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 It's not that. Not like the old days. Okay. Um, Clifford asks, hi, Mike, are haulers connecting with processors to give second life to these plastic shopping bags we're forced to use now? Uh, we hope we hope we can, but um, there aren't just aren't a lot of buyers for waste plastics around. Um, you know, the, the the stuff that that gets can re reused are the PET bottles. Um, uh, most of that gets made in the five uh, threads that are used in clothing and stuff like that. Um, making those recyclable bags that you can't carry into the store now. Mm -hmm. uh, reusable bags you can't carry in the store. Um, you know, some of the, the HDPEs are reused as well, but uh, the film film plastics, even even those heavier duty uh, uh, bags they're giving us now, uh, just don't have, there's, there's just no buyer that uh, is going to take that stuff and make another generation of bag from it. Oh, that's so annoying. It, okay, it is. It really, really is. Question from Dan. I mean, like, all, we've done all this great stuff to put in a, put a program together, a, a process together that uh, was minimizing waste. And now, uh, and now there's some areas that uh, it, it's starting to increase again. Got it. We have a lot of questions. Um, Daniel asks, should we wash out all glass before recycling it? Should we put it in the dishwasher first? Honey, not all of us have a dishwasher. I wish I had a dishwasher. It is easier to, for us to move materials that are clean. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't think dishwasher is necessary, but if you can get all the gunk out of the jars and cans, it would be a good thing. Okay, Jean asks a very important question. Can Mike address what people should do with flushable wipes as they are not to be flushed down toilets, correct? What are we supposed uh, to do? Depends what they're made of. Uh, um, if, if they're not flushable, um, they're garbage. If so they're not. Okay, well, mine say flushable on them, but director, um, the director of the Department of the Environment, no. Harlan Kelly told me that it's a lie, the PUC director. You know, um, it's sad, but a lot of manufacturers say things about their products that really aren't true. So uh, if Harlan doesn't want them in his uh, sewage treatment plant, then they need to go in the uh, black bin. He doesn't. He doesn't. Okay, black bin, everyone. Brian Bills, what do you want most citizens to know and do at this moment in time? It's fine if the answer is just... Better, but curious is if there's anything else we can be doing to help be helpful to recology. We are grateful to you. Thank you, Brian. What a nice question. Yeah, Brian. Thanks. Um, just we we would hope that um, that you, you you do a good job of cleaning the recyclables. Put, put things in the right bin, especially the organics. We we definitely want them, uh, and it, it it is best for our employees if everything is put in a bin, not laid next to it. Uh, the less they have to touch, the happier they're all going to be. Uh, we, again, we just don't know enough about how how this thing is spread that uh, we, we would rather people not touch anything they don't have to. Got it. Michaela asks, what are some ways that we as quarantined humans, honestly, I can't believe we're using this, that, we're, that these words even exist right now, but we as quarantined humans can work on reducing our waste during these times when reusables are often discouraged. A lot of people are frustrated by not being able to use reusables. I, I'm, I'm with them. Uh, you know, this, this is awful. Uh, you know, to the extent you uh, uh, can afford to buy larger packages of things uh, so that, that you generate less waste, uh, or you can buy it in containers that, that are at least recyclable, if not reusable, uh, that's, that's better as well. Got it. Aaron Tartakovsky asks, in 2016, Governor Brown signed Senate Bill 1383, which targets a 75% reduction in emission emitting organics, like food, going to landfill. What are your thoughts on this legislation? Oh, we, we were big supporters of it. Uh, uh, we believe, we don't believe organic material belongs in a landfill. It belongs uh, back on the soil. So it's got to, it's got to be you, we just can't throw food waste back on a, on a farm land, but uh, going through a process like 
uh, composting it uh, puts it in the form where, where it can be put back in it. And it's a valuable nutrient and done properly, it's not going to produce the, um, the, 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 the climate warming gases that, uh, uh, that are the wood in a landfill. Um, yeah, ideally, if you could, if you could take food waste and digest it first and capture the gases that are then uh, uh, used use as a, uh, a fuel source, that, that's even better. Um, Wait, so should we eat our compost and then poop I'm it? I'm sorry? What? No. no is it, you were playing with your plant instead of listening, Manny. Come I on. was <laughs> listening. I was just making sure it was happy. I was listening. <laughs> The plant looks very happy, so leave, you. leave it alone. Um, <laughs> it, it, there, there are organics are either you know plant material or uh, fruit uh, or meats. Uh, things like the fruit and the meat will uh, decompose rather than just uh, I don't know what the right term for for plant for leaves and sticks just breaking down. Um, so that there, there is there is mat matter in in uh, plant in uh, fruit and in meat that uh, as it breaks down will form uh, gases that can be it's 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 like a natural gas it's a it's a fuel source. Yeah. Um, uh, we can break those down in a compost operation without without them forming those those bad gases. Uh, but if if we had a digestion process. Uh, which we constantly are looking at, we haven't found anything that makes economic sense yet. But if we can get there, uh, those materials can form a fuel source that, uh, that could then be, be used. But okay, question from H Block. Will COVID affect or even end the Recology's Artist in Residence program? It's one of the most interesting thing your com things your company does. That's one of those really sad things. You know, there, there are two artists uh, right now. One of them was a young kid named Malcolm, uh, John can help me with the last name. I'm drawing a Grew up across the street from us. Uh, he's now in our art program, and I think it was um, end of May that uh, he was going to have his open studio. And uh, well, they, they can't go in now. Uh, they can't scavenge. They can't go into the studio and work on their art. Uh, so it's all delayed. It is not going to kill it, but it's going to delay it. Um, and depending on how long we have to keep doing this, uh, we're probably talking about deferring uh, at least uh, two, if not four, artists uh, for, for, for till till next year. And and then less less artists will be be able to come in next year. That's so sad. John, your son asks, do you anticipate the lingering effects on recycling resource recovery? Will, with the current inability to do business with China, or will it be business as usual when we get through this? And how's mom doing? <laughs> uh, mom walked off to a grocery store. She didn't want to listen to this. Uh, uh, we, we, we actually had done pretty well uh, replacing China with other buyers in other parts of Asia and the rest of the world. Um, so I, I don't I don't think the China issue is going to be a, a, a big problem for us going forward. Uh, you know, we we've had time and uh, largely readjusted to other buyers, of other places in the world using that material other than China. Got it. And mom's doing okay. Yeah. Yeah. Jacqueline Tandler asks, "What should I tell my parents who still use way too much plastic?" Get with the program and start using stuff that has uh, some recyclable value to it. Yeah. Program. Yeah, um, we, you, I, you, you probably know. Uh, we, we've take we've taken an issue with the industry. Challenge them. That, I think I mentioned this when we were at your shop. Uh, challenge them to try and find uh, ways to reuse the material they produce rather than having it used once and then throw it away. Yeah. Uh, we, we got nowhere with them. Um, we introduced uh, legislation at the state level that uh, frankly they, they held up from getting passed. And so we have been circulating a, um, an initiative uh, for 
voter, voters uh, to sign on to that would, would put it on the November ballot that would would require more recycling of the, t of the materials that they produce and ban some of the stuff like styrofoam that just is, is an oh ungodly God. awful product. Um, I have nightmares. We, uh, we have to collect 632,000 valid signatures to get that on the ballot. Um, we were, we've collected way more than that, uh, but there's always some that, uh, yeah. that aren't valid. Um, so we were heading for 900. We were, well on our way to that. I mean, very close. Uh, one more week, we probably would have had what we need. That has ground to a stop now. So this doesn't get done in time to be on the November ballot. Uh, uh, it'll, we'll, we'll get it done whenever we can go back out and recollect again, and it'll probably be on uh, the next statewide ballot, which would be in November of 2022. Uh, right. we're, we're not going to stop. Can I get five more minutes of your time to ask some of these questions, sure. Mike? Before mom comes back from the grocery store. Chris, do you envision US ever mandating a reduction in the variety of plastics being made so that more recycling could occur? Do I envision the US government doing that? Uh, uh, it all depends on who occupies the highest seats of government. Um, right now, I'd say that's not a possibility. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to see a change. Okay. Um, Eva asks Wait, what about cardboard? Isn't that compostable too? What are protocols around that for takeout food? Um, cardboard has a, a better and higher use uh, being made into another generation of cardboard. Okay. However, if it's, if it's soiled, it, it can't be reprocessed. They won't, they just, it messes up the process. So that, that needs to be composted. But remember, sometimes you get this, uh, we used to call it wax corrugated, um, and, and wax is compostable. Um, mm -hmm. But the problem with wax corrugated today, it's not coated with wax, it's coated with plastic. And that is... God damn it! Always that is that is garbage. Garbage. Oriana, do small amounts of tyrofoam get separated if I put that in the blue bin? Or any amount needs to be, or, or any amount needs to be dropped off at the Tunnel Road facility? Yeah, we don't, uh, we don't have the capacity at the, the recycling plant to separate the, 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 the styrofoam so where do you even get styrofoam these days oh i guess in packages i just put it in the black bin is that not we're not supposed to do you know that's 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 where it needs to go for now but uh yeah. if, if we get it in large enough quantities we do uh compress it through a heat heat process uh, uh, that allows us to have a uh, economic shipping quantity uh, based on weight uh, and th there are still users for that stuff you know they make they make these cheap frames and picture moldings and stuff like that, but it's, it's, not, it's not a highly desirable product. Got it. Okay. Teresa, I think folks have a tendency to throw things in the compost or recycling that should be thrown in the trash. It seems like folks tend to over-recycle or over-compost. It's, under called wish, it's called wish cycling. Wish cycling? Wish cycling. Wish cycling. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, you want it to be, so you put it in the and is that right? And how do you, how should Teresa or all of us encourage their neighbors to change their behavior? Well, we, we have stickers on all the bins that tell you what products are meant to go in there. If it's not there, you probably shouldn't put it in. Uh, if you want to dig further, I think the website we have called What Bin. Um, and you can, go, you can go to that, look at a whole list of products, and it'll tell you where, where to put it. And then that and that varies by community. San Francisco, uh, we have a very clear list. I've uh, just time for two more questions, real quick, folks. Robin asks: Are soft plastics one of the materials that are hard, if not impossible, to recycle? Soft plastics like plastic wrap, plastic bags, that kind of thing. Um, th there are ways to do it. Uh, they're expensive. Um, there aren't very many uh, buyers for that product. Um, and they're probably going to make a, another version of a plastic bag that's not as good quality as something made from the virgin material. Yeah. Marianne, what are you doing? Marianne asks, is it legal to put dog poop in neighbor's bins? Why would you do that? Why don't you just put it in your own bin if it's your dog poop? Oh, pe people walking around uh, pick up their dog poop and rather than carrying it home or to a public receptacle, see somebody's black bin there and want to throw it in. Um, 
Oh, I guess I, I, I don't know about the legality of it, but it's not very very nice. Um, you shouldn't do that. Just like just think about if you opened up your bin and someone had uh -huh. their dog poop in your bin, how would it make you feel? Probably not so good. Well, I've had neighbors that that's happened to, and uh, they they go nuts. Um, people don't like. You shouldn't put anything in somebody else's bin. They're they're paying for that service. They're they're doing what they can to keep it full. Cigarette butts is that compost or trash? What's that? Cigarette butts, compost or trash? What was that again? You know, I have cigarette butts. You know, like cigarette butts. No, um, it's film those noir. things are um, the fibers or whatever's in there is not compostable. Um, there's probably also a lot of hazardous materials. Uh, collected in there, that's absolute garbage. Got it, last question from Manali. Manali, how have waste routes changed since COVID-19? I'm assuming hotels and commercial heavy routes can be avoided altogether, or the time to complete a route has reduced considerably. What software do you rely on to help make efficient routes during this these changing times? I have to just say, Mike, people are so interested in everything around our trash and recycling and compost mechanism. It's amazing how fascinated people are. Yeah, right, right now we're using a product called Routeware. It tells us uh, where the trucks are and how many, how many stops they're making, how, much, uh, how many times they're, uh, they're, they're using the tipping attachments. Um, uh, and we're in the process of migrating this to something newer than that, uh, but that's not up and running yet. And have the routes changed considerably? Have the route. We haven't done it yet because we're not. We don't. We want to change them all now and then have to go back to if the economy starts to recover. But yeah, yeah. We, we, a lot of a lot of the, the routing we now do is reasonably dynamic, so we can uh, we can do it pretty quickly when 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 we have to. Got it. I just want to quickly point everyone's attention to the chat box. My operator has put in the chat box a link. It's joinit.org slash o slash manuals. I've also changed magically my background so you can see it. Um, we have been doing all this programming for free uh, for the community as a service. Uh, I am nervous about my small business's ability to make it through this long recovery because we are not making any money. Um, and costs are piling up. So if you have the ability, the financial ability to become a, a Manny sponsor, and you're not already a sponsor, I'd really like to ask you, if I could see you right now, I'd look into your face and I'd say, please help me uh, by becoming a sponsor. Um, it's $36 a month and it is how we will survive this. And so if you're not a sponsor of Manny's, I, I ask you from the bottom of my heart to consider going to the link above my head or just click on the link in the chat box. It's joinit.org slash o slash Manny's to become a sponsor. I want to thank my team, Sam, Ram, and Jupiter, right over here next to me for putting this call together. Um, and for all of you for tuning in, over 100 people tune into this call and listen to us chat. Thank you for doing that. Um, and finally, the man himself, Mike San, Gi San Giacomo. Um, a lot of people are relying on your skilled leadership right now. There are a lot of people who are, being, who are putting food on the table, which hopefully they then compost. Um, for, because of your leadership. So I just want to thank you on behalf of everyone and give you the last word. Close us out, Mike. All right. Well, thank you, Manny. It's been, been fun. And I hope, I hope a lot of people do sponsor you so we can send you a bill and you'll pay us. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, Mike. Take See care. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>